Good morning. Welcome to another low budget back porch cigar review. And this is the La Aurora 1985 Maduro. Come have a smoke with me. It's cold out this morning. Extra cold. I've already drank my coffee. This is my third favorite mug. Just because of the mustache. The uh, cigar helps in the cold, that's for sure. I'm a little past first light. Obviously, I'm into the body of the cigar. And um, on first light, uh, it had a little bit of that uh, toasty flavor for sure. A um, little, maybe a little over toasted, but. Um, I really like good toast on a Maduro cigar when you toast the foot of it before you light it. Um, it tells you a lot about the cigar, uh, what it tastes like when it's overdone, basically, when it's well done. And uh, it, it was an interesting thing. I mean, I, nor, normally I don't like harsh flavor uh, in a cigar, uh, and it was a, a bit on the edge. But uh, I really enjoyed it. It had a nice flavor to it. Once again, this is the La Aurora 1985 Maduro. It's a newer line. It's uh, affordable. It was just under $8 uh, at my local tobacconist. Um, so far, I would say it's a value stick. Now, I've actually smoked these before, and I remember enjoying them fairly favorably. Um, but uh, that was before I was doing reviews. So I'm a, a punch fan. I don't know what you'd like. I do occasionally use a guillotine cut, and rarely I'll use a V cut. Uh, larger cigars in particular, I'll use a V cut. Um, but I'm a punch guy. And um, the cap was a little rough. Um, I was real gentle with it. And it still kind of broke apart a little bit. I had to repair it a little bit with some spit. But um, on first light, good good smoke. Um, easy draw. Just like sucking through a straw almost. Uh, a little tighter now. It's, it, it's very enjoyable. But if you, if you like a strong resistance to draw, then uh, this ain't it. This, this, is, this is an easy smoke, and uh, it's going pretty quick, too. Um, I don't think this will be anything longer than a 45-minute to an hour smoke. It's a Robusto. It shouldn't be longer than an hour, depending on how you smoke it. Um, I'm taking four or five puffs a minute. I like to double puff like that. Uh, so it'll be a, a bit of a warm smoke. It's not going to be a cool burn, I don't think. Uh, let's talk about construction. It's veiny. It's dark. Um, you can see a little sheen there in the camera. It's it's a little bit oily in its uh, in its look. I would say it's definitely not a dry cigar. Uh, it's definitely more on the moist side. It's firm. It's very well rolled. Um, it's, I don't know if you can tell, but it's not a perfect cylinder. There's little bumps and waves in it if, as you look over it. So in that sense, you could say it's a little imperfect. But I like to think of it more as that it's more rustic. It's, it's more earthy. It's more human. And it doesn't really affect the smoke. But it's just something to think about when you, in terms of construction. Uh, obviously, we're double banded here. Um, I don't think that's necessary. I, I like a really pretty band on a cigar. If 
for absolutely no reason. I just like it. Um, double banding and putting a band across the whole thing. I mean, I just think that that gets to be where it's too much. Um, <clears throat> but uh, let's talk about the ash. We got a little bit, about maybe a half an inch of ash there. Uh, I'm trying to get this to focus. There we go. That's a nice speckled gray, blackish gray. I would say a little on the white side, which is good. You got a little fleck here and there coming off the edge of it. It seems to be a fairly sturdy ash. I think that it'll hold probably a good two inches before it destabilizes and I'll need to uh, work with it myself. I don't like having anything more than about an inch of ash usually anyway because you're drawing air through that ash. Um, it definitely affects the flavor of any cigar. <clears throat> Basically, when you can't see the cherry through the ash, it's about time to, to work with it. So, I thought I'd show you how I like to mess with my ash. First of all, let's take a little look at the cigar. The burn line is nice and sharp. It's a little inconsistent, but it's really not bad at all. Really pretty good. Now, what I'm told is the way to do this is to roll the edge basically just past the, the edge of the cigar. And you roll that thing off like that. And you're using the edge of your ashtray as kind of like a little razor. And that produces a semi-cone shape. Not exactly a perfect cone, but like a cone. Sometimes I'll take them kind of blow off the dust too. kind of tidies it up a little bit. Right. Pretty neat, huh? There's the cherry. You see it? I'm making this video a little bit later in the day than what is ideal. So you're gonna see me change position a lot, um, trying to avoid the sun in my eyes, to be honest. So let's talk about flavor. Um, we're a good bit into the first third, and uh, I'd say uh, definitely about a medium, medium plus on strength. I think it has moments where it's a little more than that. Um, there's a, a little bit of a, a dry, astringent flavor. The roof of my mouth, just on the middle center of my tongue. It's a very quick, dry finish. There's a definite pepper presence, but it's very mild. Um, getting some notes of caramel, uh, definitely some notes of, uh, leather, wood, very woody, very earthy cigar in the best possible way too. Let's talk about the smoke. The smoke is plentiful. Um, it's somewhat thick. It's about a medium thickness, I would say. Um, it moves with velocity. It does not cling to your head. It's not a clingy smoke at all. In an indoor environment, 
I think this would be a decent cigar for blowing smoke rings. The smoke is thick enough. Um, it moves on its own. You only need to help it out. I feel like it's starting to get a little stronger too. Beautiful cigar. It's very tasty. It goes well with my coffee. I am gonna switch to a, uh, probably like a ginger ale, something that's more palate cleansing. This cigar has the potential uh, to be a spitter. So, get about halfway through it, we'll come back. Welcome back. I'm definitely halfway through this cigar, and I've learned a lesson about this cigar. Smoke it cool. That means dial back. Don't puff on it so hard. Let it do its thing. Now, I'm making this review on Friday, December 20th, 2019. A day that will live in infamy. <laughs> For Star Wars fans. For today, The Rise of Skywalker just opened up in movie theaters. But needless to say, this one is going to be controversial. And I'm a little distracted this morning while trying to make this review and smoke this cigar. because I'm watching all the reviews. And as a registered sci-fi nerd, registered sci-fi nerd, I'm desperately interested. <laughs> anyway. The reason you smoke this cigar cool well, let me give you the story for it first. While I was watching some of these reviews, I almost let the cigar go out, which is fine. But I was uh, I was able to stoke it without having to relight it with the lighter. So, you know, if you don't know, stoking is where you just puff on it real hard for four or five puffs and give it a second and then do it again and try to relight the fire inside, basically. And it worked well. But it had gone cool, obviously. Then I relit it uh, by stoking it. And then I've just puffed on it a little more gently this time. The flavor profile completely changed. Um, well, no, the flavor profile is the same. The strength dialed back a bit. very enjoyable smoke um, and one thing I like about it is it's got personality in the sense that it, it works better when you know you you take your time and from moment to moment minute to minute you puff on it a lot and it punishes you a little bit unless you like that sort of thing maybe it's rewarding you you puff on it a little bit, and it calms down. So I've been thinking about how I'm going to start rating cigars going forward for the purposes of reviews online and whatnot. So I have a more objective system for that, right? Something you can easily understand. Lots of people do you know, the 100-point system or whatever that is, and that's cool. Some people have their their own opinions. They just state what they think or whatever. Maybe there's not something. I, I want a, something in between. A little bit of a structured system, like a 5 stars or 1 through 10. Or I'm thinking of 1 through 10. That's what I was sort of doing on the first two reviews I did. Kind of trying that out, and I'm kind of digging that. But also... 
I think it's important to know what kind of cigar you're smoking. Like the, the, the I think there's categories. There's excellent cigars. They're like what I call a destination cigar, where you might drive to another state, maybe several states away even, to go pick one up. Or obviously, to go that far for a cigar, you're probably going to pick up a set or a box. But it's that good. And a destination cigar, I mean, that is a creme de la creme. It's not necessarily a price thing. It's more like just the overall experience of the cigar. And that's different from one person. Else. It's subjective. What I think is a destination cigar, you might think is a dumpster dive, you know. Uh, and that's cool. And vice versa. But I think that, that there needs to be some sort of categorization. So um, I'm thinking at the top level, destination cigar. No, ginger ale, by the way. One of your best friends when smoking a cigar. People don't realize how good that stuff is. If you get into a cigar you've never tried before and you're not sure if you're going to like it, ginger ale clears the palate like, like nothing else. So keep that in mind. So top level, destination. Um, below that, I would say... Everyday excellent. Something that's a really good smoke. You definitely want to have them in your humidor at home. Uh, you know, you might catch them on the other side of town if that's the only place you can catch them at. You tell your friends about them. You love them. Um, you want to keep them in, in regular rotation in your smoke. But they don't inspire you to drive halfway across the country to go find them or anything like that. Uh, every day excellent. So, on the rating scale, what would that be? Destination cigars, 9.5 and above. Those should be very rare. Everyday Excellent, eight and above. Eight to, or eight to 9.5. Those should be somewhat rare, but readily available in every city. Every major market. Middle category would be seven, uh, would be uh, solid, solid smokes. And that would be anywhere from a six to an eight. These are smokes that you enjoy, they have redeeming qualities, they balance out quality for price six to an eight now within a solid smoke you have some barely smokables a 6.0 to a 6.5 is barely smokable no that's not true a five to a six is barely smokable humidor filler is what we call that And zero to five, those are dumpster divers, gas station cigars. There we go. That's the system. At least for me. That's the, uh, 
low budget back porch cigar review scale of wonders so what does this uh la aurora 1985 maduro fall well it's definitely not a destination cigar And it's enjoyable because of its unique character and the way that it really changes. That depend, and more so than most cigars, its character changes depending on how you smoke it. So it's it's almost like a two-way street with this thing. Like it's it's a, a bit of a relationship with the thing <laughs> until you've burned it out. Um, and I like that. That aspect alone is worth a lot. That's a pretty cool way to smoke. A lot of cigars, I mean, they all change a little bit if you smoke them hot or if you smoke them light, smoke them cool. Um, a lot of them change when you, uh, depending on how you light them or how you cut them. But the changes are subtle. As with so many things, the notes of flavor and all, it's all subtle. You have to be a bit of an aficionado, whether you're wine tasting or cigar reviewing or even talking about the difference from one cheeseburger to the next. It, it, it's all very subtle differences because the truth is, and I think this is true of most of us, and I'm just going to tell you like I see it, uh, we're all kind of splitting hairs with this stuff, you know. You're sucking on smoke. If I'm honest, the overarching flavor in any cigar is smoke. You know what smoke tastes like, smells like? It's smoke. Very enjoyable, though. <laughs> now, I would say I'm struggling to decide if this should be on the low end of everyday excellent. This is a cigar that, they have them in multiple places across the city. And I'm in Metro Atlanta. They have these at least three or four or five shops that I've been to. So the question is, would I, if I found myself, say, pick a city, say I'm in Dallas. Texas. Would I seek this cigar out? I don't think so. As much as I enjoy it, and as much as I appreciate its very flexible character, I think that this is not quite that level to where I'd want to seek it out. Maybe that's because I know it's available. I'll take that into account. Because I know it's available, I don't have to go seek it. That could really be a, a lot of it. So if I am going to push it down into the uh, solid smokes category, six to eight, I probably have to put it in the high end of that. I did just touch up and burn a bit. It was a little, it was starting to get a little lopsided. So this side I just touched up. But that's the one time only I've had to touch it up. And I probably didn't have to. I probably just could have rotated it. I'm going to give this a 7.9. Definitely. It's the high end of solid smoke. Flavor profile is excellent. 
the construction is excellent minus, <laughs> I would say. Um, it's better than passable. It's not quite perfect. So, you know, if I were a teacher, I'd probably give it an A minus, you know, like a 90, 88, something like that, B plus, just for construction. The ash is excellent. It doesn't flake too much. It flakes a little bit. It's a good color. It's very solid. It's very predictable. Um, easily you're going you're gonna to pull an inch off of it before it gets unstable. Um, the flavors are complex. Mmm. The finish tastes good, it's pleasant, it dissipates easily, especially with a little ginger ale. And if you smoke it a little on the cool side, it's not really a spitter. If you are a beginning smoker, cigar smoker, maybe even an intermediary smoker, and you are, you've never found a Maduro wrapped cigar that you like, uh, maybe you like strong cigars, but you like Connecticut wrappers, lighter wrappers, right? And you'd like to find a Maduro that, that fits that stronger profile without hurting you. You like a little pepper, right? But you like something with a little more sophistication. This La Aurora is an incredible value at $8 for you. And it would probably give you a really good introduction into the Maduro uh, world of cigars. And if you smoke it cool, meaning you don't hotbox the darn thing, you probably dig it. With a lot of stronger cigars, by the time I get here to the last third, I'm already wondering if I'm gonna put it down and let it die with dignity. Not this one. I'm wondering what it'll taste like when I get it down to right here. So, I think I'll skip ahead and show you what it's going to taste like down at the nub. Here I am at the nub. I've been smoking it cool. And all the way down to the nub, it is a it has actually gotten more flavorful. It almost upped its sophistication a little bit, you know? How can I compare this cigar? Musically. The majority of this cigar was like listening to uh, Johnny Cash. All his best stuff and a few of his rare hits, you know, or lesser known songs. Thoroughly enjoyed it. No pretense, straight, no chaser. You take it slow, steady, and sharp. Then down here at the nub, it's like changing the album and uh, putting on some uh, 
Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin. There's actually a lot less pepper. Um, the pepper has subsided. That's pretty rare that a cigar gets less peppery as you get towards the end. That solidifies my 7.9 on the scale. Fine cigar, sirs. Fine cigars. La Aurora, 1985, Maduro. Thank you for uh, coming along and smoking one with me. If you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell. I'll see you in the next review.